let's take a look at our eight top tips and tricks for Apple HomeKit. And let's see how many of them you already know. Welcome everyone, it is Andrew here from Apple Insider. And today we're gonna to be talking about one of my favorite topics, which is HomeKit. We have picked some of our favorite tips and tricks that you may not be aware of and compile them into this video. So check them out, let us know which ones are your favorite and if you have any tips and tricks of your own down below in the comments. With that said, let's go ahead and dive in to tip number one. Our first tip is utilizing zones. A lot of people out there already know what zones are in HomeKit, but they may not be taking advantage of them as best they could. Inside of your home, it's made up of rooms, and then those rooms can be grouped together into zones. For instance, my living room. It's part of my downstairs zone, and it's part of my inside zone, so I can control both of those groups together at the same time, such as turn off the downstairs lights, and all those rooms in that zone will do so. But we can also create extra zones and use them as pretty much second names for rooms. My living room. Some people don't call it a living room. They may call it the family room or the TV room. I can create those zones with only the living room inside of it and essentially just give my living room multiple names. That way everyone can use their natural verbiage to turn off a room using Siri and not be confused about what name it may happen to be under. You can do the same thing by creating scenes, but we find it way easier just to use these simple zones instead of having to add all accessories to specific scenes. Numero dos on our list would be home hubs. There may be things about them that you don't know. So a home hub gives you access to your home kit accessories while you're away. Turn off your lights, check in your camera feeds, all while you're not in your home. A home hub could be a home pod or an Apple TV. Those are the common ones and inside of the home app, it'll tell you if they're connected, which one's your primary one, and which are in standby mode. Picking up one of those home hubs is an absolute necessity if you wanna have a great home kit home with that remote access. But you don't have to use an Apple TV or a HomePod. You can also use your iPad. If you have a more recent iPad, just go into settings, go to home, and enable this toggle that says use this iPad as a home hub. As long as it's in your home and powered on, this can act like a home hub and you don't have to pick up a HomePod or an Apple TV. Filling in the third spot is a quick tip to fix unresponsive accessories. If you often have an accessory that just is not showing up as responsive, there is one quick fix that you can try before freaking out. And that is just resetting your home hub. A lot of times you'll get confused along the way, so unplug your HomePod, reset your Apple TV, turn on and off your iPad, just give it a few moments, connect it back again to power, and see if your devices come back online. It is always good practice to back up your HomeKit codes. These come in the box or attached to the accessory. But if you do something like mount a LifeX light bulb into your ceiling and you need to re-add it, it can be a pain to do so just by having to scan it off the light bulb itself. So we recommend keeping the little papers around. Or you can use HomePass. This is a great app that allows you to easily back up all of your HomeKit pairing codes, sync them over iCloud, and protect them with face or touch ID. You can add an accessory based on the ones that are already in your home or accessories that you've yet to add and maybe just kind of have as backups. Give each one a name if it's a new accessory, choose which room or home it may be in, add the home kit pairing code, which you can scan right off the device itself, just like you would when you were adding it for the first time, or instead of using the optical character recognition, you can type it in manually, and then assign it a category. Even add some notes below. We've definitely had accessories go bad or get replaced, and we just need to re-add them into our HomeKit home, and it's way easier to have all these backed up and safe and not storing a million pieces of paper. Multiple users are key to a whole family smart home. Don't just have yourself on there and everyone else has to use a HomePod and not be able to use their devices. Be sure to go into your home settings and add anyone else that you want to be able to control your home. And there are two different things here. When you add someone, not only can you add them, but they can have remote access or not. So maybe if you add your friends to your home, but you don't want them to toggle your lights while they're away, you can also allow or disallow editing, whether or not they can add or change accessories that are already on your home. Great way to add not only your family, but your friends as well, if you so choose. This is probably the most advanced tip on the list, but it is one of my favorites. We use an app called Controller. Controller allows you to create workflows that are time-based, and these fix kind of one of the biggest problems with HomeKit. 
here are a few of the workflows that I set up that you may want to copy. First up is this bedroom delay. When I use this, my nighttime lights come on which are a little bit dimmer, and they automatically turn off 45 minutes later. Kind of helps slowly drift you off to sleep. I have this one that I used for outside lights, but essentially all it does is turn on a scene or light at a specific time in the future. Lastly is my TV sleep timer. I always go to bed with the TV on, but I never remember to shut it off. Now that TVs are part of HomeKit, I can actually create the scene that's called movie time that turns on the TV and sets it to my Apple TV input, and then one hour later after I enable this, the TV will automatically shut off. Tie in lights and other accessories as well to make this even more personalized. So far these workflows have to run through the controller app, but with Siri shortcuts you can add them to Siri and invoke them using your voice. Controller also has a way to back up your HomeKit home. These are all the accessories and settings that you've already got going on. Say you have a great home, but you want to tinker with some things. Create a backup of your system, and then go ahead and mess with whatever you want. If it doesn't work out, just revert back to your last backup. There's the basic version and the pro version of this app, so make sure you grab that pro version, help the developer out, and get all of these extra features. Our last favorite feature on the list is flashing lights. Using this little simple app called Home Flash, you can flash any of your HomeKit lights in your home. It's really easy, dead simple to do. If you want to get someone's attention who's upstairs, just make their light flash in the bedroom. All you do is open up the app, choose the light you want, and give it a tap. The lights will then go ahead and flash on and off for just a few seconds. It even works from your Apple Watch. If I do it to these track lights that are above me, just a quick tap and you'll see they flash on and off, getting my attention. It's super simple and at only a buck, it is an easy way to add more functionality to your smart home. So that is it guys. Those are my favorite tips and tricks for Apple HomeKit. But of course, there are so many more. Let us know down below in the comments again, which ones your favorite are and share your own tips and maybe they will make it in to our next video. If you have any questions, reach out to me at Twitter at Andrew underscore OSU and I'll see you next time. Hey everyone, did you guys like that video? Be sure to click on that like button so we can create content that we know that you guys want to see. And follow Apple Insider on all social media channels. If you want the best prices on any Apple gear, check out the Apple Insider price guide that is updated daily. And until next time, we'll see you later.